hello students okay today we will start a new topic which is the conservation of minerals last time i talked about the impact negative impact of mining so from there we will start conservation of minerals and the uh, chapter we are doing is mineral and energy resources all right after ending this we will end the portion of minerals then we will come to energy resources all right so conservation of minerals our dependency on minerals and availability to us i told you earlier we are very much dependent on minerals from small pin to the largest object like sheep and everything is made up of minerals in that manner in this modern age without minerals we can't survive and from 100% of earth crust uh, sorry i mistakenly wrote two or right? it is actually 1% only 1% of the earth crust contains minerals so just wonder if only 1% of earth crust contains minerals that means minerals is very less and the way we and the speed in which we are cons uh, consuming it those minerals does not replenish it or does not occur in that speed as i been telling you again and again for one mineral to occur it takes around millions and millions of years in that manner if we use minerals in a very um, what in systematic way or in a very careless way then one day that minerals may extinct and our future generation might not get a chance to use those minerals also it will we will face many problems due to the extinct of those minerals that is the replacement and minerals formation is very the formation of the mineral is very slow likewise the consumption the, uh, the way we are consuming it we are consuming in a, in a very speedy manner and it is non renewable you all know that i tell you again and again while explaining non renewable in the class likewise uh, if we use petrol all right if you if we use petrol and uh, you go to you pour the petrol in your vehicle and you go to ravangla from namchi to ravangla will that petrol originate again will that petrol can you bring back those petrol again no not at all so in that manner those minerals are non renewable okay those energy resources are non renewable all right also if we extract minerals in a in a careless manner or if the minerals slowly decreases right slowly decreases the quantity the quantity of the minerals slowly decreases then the cost of minerals will be high and if the cost of the minerals will be high then who will face the problem we and also if we um, keep on digging those minerals extracting the minerals and the uh, near the minerals which are formed near the earth crust gets extinct and we have to um, go deep right go deep and extract minerals from deep within the earth crust then those the quality of the mineral also decreases the quality is not that good now let's come to the steps of conservation the steps uh, on the steps of conservation number one step is we have to improve technology improve technology right we should improve technology in such a way that while extracting those minerals no any minerals might get might get misused or there is no any waste of minerals right then the recycle of metals all right the another conservation method is recycling of metals there are some metals like iron which can be recycled uh in simple words those bottle wallas comes in your come in your house right they take bottle and uh, along with bottle they take stoves and uh, things that are made up of steels and irons do you think th those guys are taking those um, stoves and uh, those rotten irons just to throw no at all they take it so to what recycle it yes or no and in that manner recycling metals just throwing it uh, uselessly is extinction uh, is the way to ex extinction of minerals right we must recycle those minerals which can be recycled likewise iron steel etc using other alternatives and substitute likewise um 
We don't have to use cars now and then. Yes or no? We can walk. That is the alternative. Or we can use bicycle. In that manner, we will, what, what we are doing is, we are preventing or conserving petrol or diesel. Okay, this is the conservation of minerals. So now we have ended the portion of minerals. Now we will come to energy resources. Okay, energy resources, it's need. Okay, what is the need of energy resources? And on our energy resources, coal, petroleum, electricity, everything comes under energy resources. The battery that we use is made up of energy resources. Likewise, the electricity that we use is made up of, electric, uh, is made up of energy resources. In that manner, energy resources is very important in our life. Also, the video that you are watching right now, you are using it because you are charging your phone. Because that energy resources is helping you to charge your phone and you, you are able to watch it. Without energy resources, even those phones are useless. So, energy resources is categorized into two types, which is conventional resource and non-conventional source. Okay, let's talk about conventional source. Conventional, conventional source are those energy resources which we've been using from the past years, which we are using uh, from the past, all right? Likewise, non-conventional resource uh, source are those uh, resources which we are using recently. Or the discovery of those energy resources has been done recently. Non-conventional resources are those resources which cannot be renewed. It is on. It is. Uh, it destroys the environment. Okay. It is uh, not friendly to the environment. Likewise, non-conventional uh, resources are those resources which can be renewed or which is, uh, and it it is uh, friendly to environment. It does not destroy environment. Okay, the concept that we, we uh, the conventional source resource that we will uh, study today is coal, petrol, natural gas, and electricity. And under non-conventional resources, natural uh, or atomic energy, solar energy, wind energy, biogas, tidal energy, and geothermal energy. Today we'll complete this portion, and the another portion we'll do in the next class. So. Let's talk about coal. Okay. How is the formation of coal done? When plants and when plants when plants they fall uh, fall to the ground, right? Fall to the ground or fall, fall to the out, out surface. Slowly, according to time, different soil. What they do is they uh, bury those plants or they bury those unborn plants, right, unborn plants, slowly it gets compressed. And according to time, it gets buried deeper and deeper, compressing it, the pressure of the, the, pressure of the soil and the land compressed, makes it compressed. And when it makes it compressed, slowly there is a um, formation of coal, right? It takes around lots of years and there is a formation of coal. And you all know coal it's not considered as one of the um, one of a resource which is environmentally friendly. Why? Because it emits lots of smoke with it, and it is it it can destroy the ozone layer too, and it can create lots of air pollution, and so on. So, likewise, degree of compre uh, compression. One thing is degree of compression, depth. At what depth it is, right? How deep that coal is. And the time of burial. And one thing, the form, uh, one uh, thing that depends upon the co formation of coal is time of burial. Uh, how long it has been down the earth crust? Okay, this coal is uh, characterized into two types, or uh, we can uh, we can uh, there's two types of categories of Cool. Number one is on the basis of quality. Okay, on the basis of quality, there is four types, which is peat, lignite, bituminous, and anthracite. Okay, peat has the quality of peat or the quality of peat coal is low carbon. If there's a high carbon, the burning uh, properties 
is I. Okay. Or it can create lots of heat. Likewise, when it has low carbon, that means pit is a low quality coal. And it has high moisture. It is found in a, uh, lots of liquid is found with it. Or the coal that is, which is pit is wet. In that manner, it is very, what? Low quality coal. And low heating capacity. When it is wet and when it has low carbon, it has very low heating capacity too. Another one is lignite. It is low grade brown coal. Coal usually is black. The coal that we see in markets and that the coal that we use is usually black. And when it is brown, something is wrong with this coal, right? It is low grade. And lignite is soft with high moisture content. It is very soft. Usually the coals are very hard. And how um, the heat which the coal produce uh, depends upon hardness too. The, and this lignite coal is very soft. Along with it, it contains high moisture. It is very wet. Now let's come to bituminous. Bituminous, it is found deep inside the earth. Right? When any coal is found very deep inside the earth, that means it has taken lots of time. Okay? It has taken lots of time or that coal has been originating, originating under the earth crust from millions of years back. And in that manner, that coal is very good in quality. And there is a fight between, uh, and we can say bituminous and anthracite are rivals because they have very much competitions. Okay. The burning, the burning, uh, the heating capacity of this coal is very high. Uh, as uh, as it is what as it is formed uh, in the in the region, in the area or in under the earth crust where the as it is found in in a depth right in the depth of the earth crust, earth crust it is found deep under the earth crust we all know when we go deep under the earth crust the temperature is very high why because due to the lava and whatnot things which is uh, which is in the core of the earth and as it is found in the high temperature, this coal has lots of heating capacity. And this coal is commercial use, which means this uh, coal is used in various industries, likewise iron and steel industries, so to smelt those iron. Smelting literally means to, uh, this coal is used so to separate iron from its ore. Now let's come to the last category, which is anthracite. Anthracite has the highest quality coal. It's the highest quality coal, right? And it is very hard coal. It does not have any moisture with it. It is very hard. It is not soft at all. And it is formed in a very deep. It is found uh, deep under the earth crust. And in that manner, these things are the topics that you, you need to memorize. Okay, now, and uh, there is another uh, uh, characteristics too, or we can categorize coal into another sections too, which is number one is on the basis of quality, number two is on the basis of age too. On, on the basis of age, there is two types, which is uh, number one is Gondwana, on the, uh, number one is Gondwana coal, and number two is tertiary coal. Gondwana coal, uh, literally, you can understand. The coal which has been originated from 200 million years ago. And tertiary coal, the coal which, which has been originated from 55 million years ago. 55 tertiary, 200 Gondwana. And this coal can be categorized into two types on the basis of quality and on the basis of age. Now let's come to another topic which is petroleum. Petroleum industry as a nodal industry. Okay, nodal industry, very important industry. Petroleum industry is considered to be one of the very important industry in the world or in today's world. Why? Because from petroleum, many other important uh, things that we use in our daily life can be made. Likewise, plastics, diesel, kerosene oil, anything. 
when we are talking about petroleum we are not talking about petrol that can that is used to drive cars okay we are talking about crude oil from where petrol diesel kerosene and natural gas and many other things can be extracted or can be made likewise synthetic textile synthetic textile nylon which can be used to make various uh, kinds of objects fertilizers likewise fertilizers that we use to uh, for agriculture and numerous chemical industries also use this petroleum so now let's talk about the formation of petroleum okay consider this as a earth surface and here is the mineral or let's say a rock or any kind of object slowly according to time these minerals these minerals gets converted into a liquid form all right it takes millions and millions of years this rock slowly what it slowly what does it what does it become it converts into a liquidated form which is petroleum okay and when it is liquid it what it penetrates under the earth, more deeper under the earth surface when it penetrates more deeper the under under uh, earth surface the earth surf, uh, surface has a very unique property likewise some layers of the earth crust some layers of the earth crust is porous which means from here any kind of liquid can pass through here while some while when we go deeper there there is a layer under the earth crust when we go deeper there is a layer under the earth crust from where no liquid can pass through it this layer blocks any kind of liquid to pass and to uh, get inside the core of the earth okay and this mineral when it this rock when it slowly converts into a liquidated form into a petroleum and slowly when this get insert uh, this gets in uh, uh, penetrates under the earth crust more deeper and deeper this entire petroleum gets deposited in the area which is non porous layer non porous layer non porous layer from here no liquid can penetrate right and when we extract petroleum we drill the earth crust and extract from here and as we all know the core of the earth has a very high temperature or there's a heating process going up from the core from the core of the earth and as petrol is formed deep inside the earth crust the uh, due to the heating of the uh, core of the earth this petroleum slowly converts it itself into a gaseous form into a gaseous form so when we are extracting petrol along with petrol we also get natural gas okay and natural gas is also one of a very important energy resources i hope you understood this and petroleum in india is found in mumbai high in the western part i i hope you you all know where mumbai is located mumbai high gujarat and assam which is uh, the area is called digboy okay now let's come to natural gas i told you how natural gas occur along with petrol yes or no due to the heating of the uh, heating heating which uh, which which is uh, heating from the core of the earth those petrol slowly evaporates slowly con converts itself into a gaseous form which is petrol okay natural gas is a very important energy resources likewise the lpgs that we use for cook food is made up of natural gas yes or no so source of energy as well as an industrial raw material it is a source of energy as well as lots of industries use natural gas found in associated association with or without petroleum okay this means i uh, explained to you earlier in the in, in the drawing how pe, uh, natural gas occurs the formation of natural gas so it is found with petroleum when we extract natural gas when we are extracting petroleum along with petroleum we also um, are extracting natural gas with it but in area area where those petroleum as the uh, the entire petroleum 
has been uh, converted into natural gas in those in those uh, uh, areas what there is no any petrol only natural gas can be gained because petroleum has changed the entire petroleum has changed itself into a gaseous form due to the heat this natural gas is environmental friendly coal petroleum they emit lots of carbon dioxide or lots of gases which is um, very unhealthy gases yes or no while in the, uh, while natural gas is environmental friendly it does not destroy the environment why because it emits low carbon dioxide emission and the areas where natural gas is obtained in india or is found in india is krishna godavari basin mumbai high gulf of kambe cng compressed natural gas is used in vehicle in replacing liquid fuels okay nowadays there is a new kind of uh, gas which can run vehicles which can replace petroleum which is environmental friendly that is natural gas now let's come to the another topic which is electricity the importance of electricity we all know without electricity in today's world we can't survive we can't survive by using those bottles of kerosene so to get light we can't use television or mobiles without electricity in that matter electricity plays a vital role in our day to day life and it not only that per capita consumption is considered as index of development which means the use of electricity by one country uh, uh, the use of uh, electricity by one country denotes the development of the country as to uh, how developed that country is if in india the entire india if only mumbai uses electricity that means our country is undeveloped if in sikkim only namchi and gantok has electricity that means our sikkim is underdeveloped yes or no but if in sikkim the entire people use electricity that means eventually our state is a well developed state i hope you understood and electricity can be divided into two types hydroelectricity and thermal electricity hydroelectricity simply is the electricity electricity which is produced through water or through running water due to the force of the water due to the force of the water those turbines what did they, they rotate and they generate electricity it can be, it can also be called multi power river projects dams like bakra nangal dam damo uh, damodar uh, sorry there's a spelling mis mistake damodar Va valley corporation these are multi, multi power river projects or dams which helps in generating electricity in our country now let's come to thermal electricity thermal electricity are those electricity which we gain from um, burning coal petroleum etc and this uh, this by burning coal petroleum it is very unfriendly to the environment or it can destroy the ozone layer or it can uh, emit lots of carbon dioxide which can harm we people and also this um, these things can pollute the air etc okay and this um, thermal electricity are those electricity uh, those electricity which is non renewable which is uh, made up of non renewable resources which can extinct if we use in a careless man 